Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here, and welcome to part two of my week-long series on Folklore the Affliction, focusing on Fall of the Spider. So the first story I'm going to be playing is story one in the Fall of the, Sp Fall of the Spider expansion. And that is going to be called Into the City. And we're going to be playing on the Dusk difficulty level, which is the level you play at when your characters are just starting. You can also play this expansion as a direct follow-up to the Dark Tales expansion, the first expansion for Folklore of the Affliction. I have that, but I have not played any of those stories yet, so I'm starting my characters off at the beginning, so we will be playing on Dusk. About 120 minutes to uh, go through this story, so we'll see about that. I think it'll be quite a bit quicker playing solo. And this story takes place in the city of Yorotrusk, which is kind of the main city in the land of Kreml. What's interesting here is it does give you a backstory telling you, telling the players all about the different things that have happened so far in the folklore ongoing story. This is a canonical version of the events. Some of the events may be different depending on the choices you made during your past story. So this is considered the canonical chain of events, the canonical story so far. And then we get a little synopsis here of the setup for this story and going into the mission. What I wanted to focus on on this video, and this is going to be kind of the first part of the ongoing review of Folklore the Affliction, and I am calling this the, uh, the Bookkeeping Begins. Folklore the Affliction is an exercise in bookkeeping. Uh, it has some of the most bookkeeping I have ever seen in a board game. Maybe only... Uh, Kingdom Death Monster, Shadows of Brimstone maybe has almost as much. Shadows of Brimstone definitely as you get going has more. But starting off already just right out of the gate, this can be a difficult game to um, keep track of everything. And so the game actually does come with official character sheets and it highly suggests that you use them in addition to all of the components. So it's one of those weird games, kind of like Shadows of Brimstone. These games that come with a whole bunch of components, a whole bunch of things, when in reality, they probably should just be an RPG book with just a few components. And really that's what they are trying to make folklore the affliction into when you start taking a look at this adventure creation kit that came with the last part of the last kickstarter um, this really is a rpg manual and it tells you how you can create your stories the most interesting thing about this manual is that all of the cards in the base game and the first expansion they are all listed in here as items. And so you don't even really need a bunch of the components to play Folklore the Affliction. You could just play it as an RPG type board game using your character sheets and this manual here that goes through absolutely everything. It's a pretty cool idea, however, big however, it is pretty much out of date and obsolete now with this new expansion. This new expansion adds quite a bit to all the cards, abilities, items, uh, all of that kind of stuff, and none of that is available in here. I would hope that they would produce a supplement to this adventure creation kit that includes all of the information because I think this is a neat idea and I think this is a neat direction for the game to go. I mean, it even has all of your uh, stats for all of your monsters and everything. So yeah, 
I've always said that I wished that Shadows of Brimstone, you know, instead of a whole bunch of cards, it just had everything in books and we could use the, we could use character sheets because keeping track of all of the cards and all of the components, while fun, it is something that we like to do. It can become really overwhelming and that is especially true in Folklore of the Affliction, as you'll see. So we're gonna find, I'm, I've finalized the two characters that we're going to be playing. And the first is the Judas, and her name is Shana Chana Durain. She is a Judas Earthbinder. I'm picked, I have picked the um, Earthbinder Focus, which lets me inscribe runes to different pieces of equipment as I level up, and it gives me a pretty powerful spell called Earth Spark. So she starts with a prayer, and the prayer that I chose at random is Heaven's Light. Call upon the powers of heaven to illuminate the area with intense light. So vampires and Nekaratu, Nekaratu, the dead, are lose 2d6 Vita, and other creatures lose 2d4 Vita. Darkness is removed from the current map. So this current map for this first story is in darkness. We are in the dead of night here. One thing that Folklore the Affliction does that I super appreciate, and I think, was it Dungeon Crusade is also doing this, and I wish more games did this, is on all of their tokens, one side has art, the other side has what it means. Thank you so much for this. This is just, I don't know why so many board games don't utilize this concept, but Folklore of the Affliction does it and does it tremendously well. Thank you so much, Greenbrier Games. All right, uh, we're, oh yeah, so this is a pretty tough spell to cast though. It's a, it's a faith casting of nine. I don't know if I would use this right away. I don't think I need to, but we'll see. And then she starts with her sickle which is her weapon. It's a melee weapon, one-handed, does 1d4 damage, and it is plus two damage versus nature foes. So she's good against nature, vampires, and the dead. Now, one of the expansions came with heirloom cards. These are kind of like your personal items in Shadows of Brimstone. You draw one at random, and this kind of like, you know, is, is the, the heirloom of the character. This is what the character starts with, and she starts with a silver pendant which any melee non-affliction foe, that means non-boss foe, that hits you with a melee attack in an encounter loses one Vita. So she has like thorns, a, a thorn aura. Very cool. We've already looked at her abilities. Starting with two, when you play with two heroes, according to official rules, each hero also gets a companion. It can be either militia or animal. I've chosen animal companions for both of my uh, heroes. And she is going to have the Bearded Dragon, which gives her a plus two max Vita, so plus two to her life. And she ignores the effects of desert hazards. I don't know what those are yet because I haven't gotten to the desert. So this is definitely part of the expansion that I've already mixed in. Additionally, so we're gonna have, we're gonna keep track of her Vita and power points using the handy little trackers that came with the expansion or the older expansion. And we have our attack and defense tokens. She already started with one bandage. Official rules when you're playing with two heroes, you start with an additional bandage if, if they can hold it. And once again, bandages recover for Vita. Thank you. Additionally, an official rule on two players is you start with a boon. Boon are one-time use effects and you draw them at random and her boon is a re-roll. She can re-roll a failed skill check. So as you can see already, this is like a level zero or level one character. There's already a lot to keep track of. And that's what I'm saying that I'm not gonna do the playthrough on camera, just because there are so many little bonuses in this game to keep track of. It's kind of insane to remember them all but I do have a lot of the stuff written here on these character sheets. We have the front, we have the back of the character sheet dealing with all of their gear. We also have, as if that's not enough bookkeeping, we also have our session record sheet here, which we keep track of our scenario, who the characters are, different notes, different uh, triggered story moments or story decisions. 
And then we also have our encounter skirmish record sheet where we keep track of the different enemies and battles we have fought. So I kind of think of this game as me, I am not like actively playing the role of these characters. I'm kind of like the manager of the party <laughs> and keeping track of what they're doing, keeping a ledger of the, uh, of the adventures. That's kind of like my role as the player is party manager. And then we're going to take a look here at our huntress. Her name is Jana Kazmar and she is a shaman. So she, all of her attacks are sacred. And what is sacred? I forgot. Sacred. Uh, roll attack dice twice versus demonic undead creatures and take the higher result of the two and add plus one damage. So she is better against uh, those types of foes. She can absorb one hit free from an ethereal foe and she can turn into her ghost form. So everything else we've taken a look at. Her companion is going to be the mongoose which gives her an additional boon at the start of each story. And she can unexhaust another card. So she can use an exhaustible card twice. Her heirloom was a lore book. She starts with plus one ability point, which lets her learn a new ability quicker. So that, that is really cool. We've already seen those other things here. Now her tokens that she's starting off with, she, of course she has her skirmish attack and defend token. She's got her two bandages and her two boons, one for the official rules and then one for the mongoose. The first one being she can take an additional move action and the second one being that she can receive an extra attack. So yeah, not bad. Those will be nice to use those boons. All right, now I just wanted to go over real quick before we end this video. Just two little cheat sheets that I use that I've downloaded from BGG. One has a list of all the keywords, which are super important. There are a ton of keywords in this game, and they're quite difficult to find in the rule book, or they can be. So this is super handy. I might have actually downloaded this from Greenbrier. They have uh, Greenbrier Games has an amazing website with all kinds of documentation for their games and for especially Folklore of the Affliction. You can download all of the stories, I believe the storybooks, the rule books, um, all of these you know, character sheets, session reports, all kinds of stuff you can get from their website. I highly recommend visiting it if you're looking for some supplemental material for the game. And then we have here, we have a little bit about status uh, bonuses and uh, different kinds of the different kinds of creatures. Just a nice little handy sheet. Additionally, I have this form, the sheet here that has some advanced encounter rules. Some of these are from the back of the book where you have the advanced rules and then you have these advanced skirmish rules. And then on the back of this one, again, we have some keywords. Finally, I think we're going to look at one more thing, and this is something that is included in the new expansion, and um, I really like this inclusion. So these are all the chits from the new expansion here. I've got them all in one chit tray. So this comes with some uh, neat tokens here. You have this stack of tokens. There are five, one for each uh, player character if you're playing with the full complement of five players. And each one of these tokens details the positive and negative effects that can happen to your character using the icon that is also represented in the book and also telling you what it does on the other side. Again, I know I don't like a ton of chits in games, but that is usually because the chits aren't really useful. In Folklore of the Affliction, almost every chit has it. They tell you what they are and what they do. And so in that sense, I think that the abundance of chits of tokens in this game are really good. They're not just representing icons that you have to, again, go and look up in the book. They are useful. They serve a purpose. And in that way, I really appreciate them. So these are all included in the new expansion, just kind of an ease of life type uh, thing. And then you also get two sets of the negative effects that you can apply on enemies. 
so you can remember what the enemies are suffering from. So, all right, well, that's it. I'm going to play this uh, first part of this first story today, and I will be back with a wrap-up. All right, guys, take it easy. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.